So, recently I've been playing Codex Lost. It's a pretty charming, like, high fantasy, souls-like, where you play as a mage. And I do mean as a mage, because there's no other type of playstyle here. The footage you're seeing here is from a pre-release version of the game, but there is a demo on Steam, I believe, that you can try out if you want to check it out for yourself. Also, this entire game is being made by a singular individual, which is pretty impressive. And I do enjoy the design of the world and its wackiness. I also talked to a crow back at the start of the game, and trust me, there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. Also, the game is voice acted, and I'm not sure if the developer did all the voice acting, but if he did, hey, not bad, man. Are you beginning your weary travels, traveler? Or are they continuing on from a distant past? Although, I gotta say, some of these characters really enjoy talking. And there are five main bosses in the game. Every one of them has a codex that you have to find so that it stops being lost I guess and due to the fact that I have explored quite a bit and only found one I can tell you this game is at least a little big but I already know that when I mentioned solo indie dev a lot of you guys instead of clapping with your ass cheeks you just went like mm, I don't know about that and trust me I get it all right but making video games ain't easy and that's why we're here. Now, I don't want to sound overly negative and like I said, this is all pre-release and the game is pretty charming, but there are some issues that just set it back and I kind of just want to get into it because... <laughs> God damn, I have some things to say about that. But for every problem, I also bring a solution and whether you want to make use of it or not, I mean, that's completely up to you. At the end of the day, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's all just advice, man. It's all just advice. So, if you've played any indie Souls-like before, you already know that the jank is plentiful and this is no different. Also, a lot of the UI needs redesigning and a lot of enemies need rebalancing. For example, there is no reason for these tiny ass spiders to knock you down with every single hit. Actually, I think you get knocked down with any physical hit and some of these guys will go crazy style on your ass and just kill you. It doesn't feel great. But honestly, most of these game's issues come from its outdated platform. This is a game where you play like a mage, but it's built on mostly Dark Souls controls which aren't great for spell casting, and having to cycle your spells around looking for the one you want to use at a given time is simply impractical and even frustrating. But so, when it comes to the combat, you can use your arrows to cycle through spells and then you press R1 to cast, just like souls. You also have a shield that you can use to block or parry based on your activation timing, but you mostly want to stay at range because you're a mage and getting hit will knock you down, which will result in getting hit even further, and so like keeping your distance is cool and all, but these enemies will close the gap on you, or sometimes you'll get ambushed and switching spells on the fly just feels kinda awkward. Overall, this game would just benefit a lot more from a Lords of the Fallen 2023 type magic system, which is just an objective upgrade to traditional Souls magic. And the weird part about this is that this game does have something like that, because if I hold L2, I can then quick cast a lot of different spells, but there's no UI or anything on screen that actually tells me like what spells are connected to what buttons. Although, I mean, of course, you, you can just memorize this, but it doesn't look very clean. Plus, you can really only do that for four different spells, but you can have a total of 10 different spells on you. And there is another issue that will tie in with this one when I talk about how to fix it, which is the dark areas in this map that require the compass to light them up. But the compass uses the same slot as the shield, so you either see your way forward or you block. Not a great 
trade-off. You can switch around between them also, but it's again not very practical. And an easy way to fix both of these issues would be with a simple control scheme overhaul, which would also require some UI changes, but hear me out because this could look very sick considering my dude has a book in his hand and considering this is mostly a ranged projectile based game I think some shooter style mechanics would work great here just hear me out let's picture something like this you put the quick slot items in the d-pad they are used with a single press of a button. Triangle could give you the ability to switch between two different staffs, which isn't a thing in the game right now, but it would add some extra flexibility to the gameplay. After that, you put the shield on L2 and a lock strafe style aiming mode in L1, which keeps your character aligned with your camera, and this would be basically your free aim button. And then you still have some free spots for other stuff if you want, like the compass, but personally, I'll just scrap it and give people like an early game mage light spell that costs like 10 mana to cast and lasts a while, and since the game has mana regeneration, like they would be fine. And yes, I am aware that the compass does have some extra abilities that you unlock as you go, and it's not just a lighting tool, but at the same time, it doesn't really do anything crazy that an interact button with those objects wouldn't do as well, and it just kind of feels like an unnecessary extra step. But back on the control scheme, if we hold L1, which would be our free aim, or if we lock onto an enemy with R3, our spell book would become active, and after that we could use R1, R2, triangle, square, and cross the cast, circle would still be free for dodging, and that's five spell slots right there. But how do we open up this a bit more? What if, when you are holding L1 or locked on, you can switch pages on the book with a D-pad? Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either have four different pages, one for each direction, which would make a total of 20 spell slots, or you could have a center page and then another one on the right and another one on the left, and you would switch between them with right and left D-pad, and then you would also have the ability to to hold the left or right d-pad to go to the leftmost or rightmost page for some quality of life. And this would make a total of 15 spell slots, but either way you get more spell slots and better access to them as well. And this would be awesome because you could have like different spell kits on different pages, I mean you can organize it however you want to, but you could have like a page dedicated to ice spells, another one dedicated to fire, stuff like that. And then if you could also switch between two different staffs, you know, like this would really open up the game a lot more. But also when it comes to the spells, there is a different problem, which is I have no idea where I get any of these materials. Now, you can find and craft a lot of stuff in a lot of different schools of magic, but for example, what if I want to craft an arcane bolt? I need some arcane crystals, some eternal cores, which I don't have, and where do I get it? Man, I have no fucking clue. Where do I find some impulse factors? <laughs> Again, no idea. Actually, I have no idea where I found any of these things. And granted, you don't need a lot of them, but personally, I think it would be a lot better if you actually had to gather some more of these things, but also have the game tell you somewhere where you actually do it. So you can go gather these things and it would just make spellcrafting feel more deliberate and not as much like, oh, lucky me, I have everything I need, because if I didn't, 
Well, I just wouldn't know where to get it either way. But considering we are a curator, we're on a library, and this game is all about the books and the knowledge, it would make sense to expand upon that idea and include stuff like a bestiary, for example. A map would also be appreciated. That will hopefully also contain information about the enemy's loot tables. And in general, I would just like to see the game open up a bit more and just give me some information. But in a game all about magic and crafting spells, the crafting system is pretty basic. Like, it works and then you get a new spell, but that's about it. And I can't help but wonder that maybe we should be able to manipulate these spells a bit further. Now, there are some games like, for example, Two Worlds 2, which is pretty old, but it's got a pretty fun spell crafting system, but there are simpler ways to do this. And while I say simple, it might require a lot of tweaking under the hood, but imagine a system like Warframe, for example. Let's say you go to some place in your library, like a rune crafting table or something like that. Anyway, you can see all your spells there, you select one of them and you upgrade the spell. Now, your game doesn't work like Warframe, so let's say you only have like two or three slots per spell, but the way this works is that these cards will change how the weapon works. And for example, Fast Hands increases reload speed, Hellfire more heat damage, Magazine Warp gives you more magazine capacity, and like I said before on Codex Lost, you would only have like two or three slots per spell. Let's call them rune slots, right? This, this wouldn't be cards, this would be runes that you would be modding the spell with. And imagine you could add stuff like, for example, quicker cast speed, the basic options like increasing the range of spells, increasing the AOE size on spells. Let's say we could increase the status chance uh, for example, like fire spells actually triggering an overtime burn effect or even toxic attacks doing an overtime poison effect. Maybe one of the runes can have an effect that, for example, increases the stagger damage that a spell does and will start to knock down enemies that it didn't previously. Although, personally, I would advise against making any kind of rune that would just straight up increase damage that should come from the different staffs and their upgrades. And I say this because if you do add a damage upgrade, then everybody is gonna want the damage upgrade, you know what I mean? And so, if you don't have it, they'll just use other stuff. And while of course there are always things that are gonna be better than others, that will probably help increase build variety. Alternatively though, something you could do is to actually craft those runes and slot them into your staff, which would then be applied to every spell shot from that staff, or you could also just do both. You slot runes into the staff, you slot runes into the spells, and then obviously the effects of both would stack. And with a system like that, you could make some pretty wild magic, but that is completely up to you, it depends on the values of the runes. Also, you can make just simple runes that you craft and that's it, or you can craft a rune and then maybe still upgrade it. Either way, I just think armament and spell customization would be nice, especially in a game all about magic. After that, let's also talk a little bit about stats, because this uses the Dark Souls style memory system, and that's how you get more spell slots, which sucks. Look, I'm not much of a mage myself, all right? I play Dark Souls for the melee combat, but I never really found the idea of throwing stat points into the void until eventually it does something for you very appealing. Personal opinion, I guess, but I would prefer the Elden Ring route, where you would find, like, an item on a specific area of the map, or even, like, a unique statue that you can interact with, and, you know, they're, like, spread across the land, but whenever you see them, you already know you're getting a new spell slot. Also, while I enjoy the fact that projectiles can collide in the air, 
the fact that these spells have no tracking whatsoever sometimes can make it really hard to hit moving enemies even if they're just really slow moving enemies. And something else that also needs to be discussed is teleportation. This menu right here needs pictures because I will forget what these names are. And then there's also this thing which is also a means of teleportation and it will take you to the last of what those things that you interacted with, wherever that may be, which actually I don't even know what it is. The game also doesn't really tell you and it's again just one of those things that over time you just end up forgetting and then you're like, oh, this is where this day, right. But if it turns out that you actually didn't even wanna be here to begin with, then you would have to spend a page of the lost tome in order to get back to the library and I mean kind of sucks but at the same time I don't really feel like we need two different methods of teleportation I, mean, I, I don't know to be honest I don't know what to do about this might as well just get a fucking portal in here and just make the portals your bonfires and you can use this as like a model for the rune crafting table or something I don't know so assuming we do that there would also be more portals now which would mean you know more stuff here and since I already got lost plenty of times in this world because it's pretty freaking massive I think a map would be a great addition now this can also circle back into the whole gathering of knowledge type stuff but imagine that when you interacted with this stone instead of just having a bunch of names you'd actually have a big image of a map for example let's picture something like this a big overworld with various different areas and then when you click on one of the areas it would show you their sub areas this map wouldn't need to be super in depth but it would just help with people not getting lost as fuck but of course you could add some images like a lock on lock doors that you have found like a skull on bosses that you have encountered and then you would also of course have your teleportation portals show up on that map which would actually just completely remove the necessity of like images or even of long lists of destinations because you can literally just see where that portal is on the map and when it comes to actually making the image of a map like there are a lot of websites online that can help you with that for free for the most part but you know photoshop is your friend plus as the developer you can probably just go into like free cam and take a picture from the top of the area and use that as a map maybe drop a filter on top of it or something but maybe perhaps you would have to find a map fragment in that area before the area actually showed up in your map i think that could be pretty satisfying you know that feeling of charting the land as you go and again you could also unlock some map markers as you find portals as you find locked doors boss rooms you know stuff like that also please stop sending me back to the library every time i die i don't have new spells to craft every single time i die all right it's really just an extra loading screen but yeah i mean besides that bro i wish you all the luck in the world peace